Hi everyone. I think now you have a better understanding about value of uh, open source software as well as uh, how you can download WSO2 open source software as well as how you can contribute back uh, to our uh, software practice. So I'm going to uh, focus more on how you can use uh, WSO2 open, soft open source software in your products. Um, or project that you are working on. So before that, uh, let's take a look what's really happening today. Uh, so there are this uh, famous quote that software is eating the world. I think you have to be really proud about it because you are part of that uh, process. So why software is eating the world? Because many organizations are building uh, applications that they are trying to deliver various experiences to their end users. So how they do that? They do that using software. It can be a mobile application, it can be a web application, or it can be an IoT application that providing this experience to the end user. To do that, you have to write these applications. But not only that, you need to connect with different systems. Uh, you have to fetch data. Uh, you have to provide notifications. A lot of things are happening behind that particular uh, experience or the application. Um, and these delivery channels will connect to the uh, software that you build to deliver these experiences. So that's where uh, WSO2 uh, open source software is really helpful for you to build that end-to-end -end scenario. So let's uh, step back and take a look uh, what's really happening in this application development. In most cases, we are trying to use uh, this um, core capabilities that we call as system of record because none of the organizations or even if you are an individual trying to build some application worried about um, building these core capabilities what we can do again we can go and find an open source alternative or available service that is providing these core capabilities. It can be a document management capability, it can be accountant related capability, or it can be uh, various other core capabilities. So once you have that, around that core capabilities, you have to build uh, these uh, applications and improve the core capabilities that we call as domain services or domain APIs. So domain services will uh, enrich the core capability and domain APIs will expose those capabilities as an uh, reachable functionality for the application. So once you do that, uh, you can build the application, but how you are building a domain API or domain service is a question. One, if there's a API or a way of accessing the core system is available, you can uh, directly call it, but you might have to augment the data. You might have to connect multiple systems, so you need some integration capabilities to do that. Then, uh, you uh, once you do the integration, how you can securely expose this capability coming as a problem. That's where an application programming interface or an API can help you to expose that capability as a um, accessible function for the application layer. Now you have these two capabilities, but you need to secure it because you can't just expose these capabilities to the end user. So it has to be properly, properly secured by using some uh, security uh, capability. So that's where identity and access management is really important that you can control how a user will use these capabilities that you are exposing. So that, that's where identity and access management um, is coming and playing a role. So that is um, uh, where WSO2 is helping you because we are providing three core capabilities, API management, integration, identity and access management. So when it's come to uh, API management, you can download two um, software solutions. One we call API manager. Uh, so if you are running uh, things on a traditional 
uh, hypervisor based a virtual machine. API manager product is a nice fit that you can manage the life cycle of an into uh, life cycle of an API from uh, end to end. So that is where API manager coming and playing a role. And then the second uh, product or the new uh, the latest product that we release uh, in the API management uh, uh, section called the uh, API platform for Kubernetes or uh, short name for that is APK. So if you are into more Kubernetes um, uh, related development, you can use uh, APK and run the API management in a Kubernetes native fashion because uh, the programming style and uh, how you approach programming in Kubernetes is different uh, and how you can Utilize some of the Kubernetes uh, core capabilities um, are really uh, embedded into the uh, a API management for Kubernetes products. So you can be a very uh, productive developer inside cloud native infrastructure. Then the integration. Integration, we have two offerings as well. Uh, so uh, integrations are built by using enterprise integration patterns. Uh, both our offerings are supporting enterprise integration patterns. The first offering we call it as a micro integrator. Uh, you can run distributed integrations by using micro integrator and it has a nice uh, graphical user interface that you can build these uh, end to end integration flows by dragging and dropping these um, uh, uh, UI elements by using the tool that we provide. And then the uh, second offering for integration is a different approach. It's a programming language that we call Ballerina. So by using Ballerina, you can extend your integration capabilities because you might find some limitation when it comes to uh, the first product micro integrator uh, because it is done for traditional integration. And um, uh, when it comes to cloud native integration, you might have to deal with more complex scenarios. So that's where you can utilize Ballerina as a way to implement these integrations. So um, uh, Ballerina provides a lot of examples since it's a programming language. You might think that how can I be productive using Ballerina, but don't worry. There's a lot of examples that we have and um, it provides uh, how you can build a specific integration flow and it has an example uh, or code uh, that attached to the example so you can directly use that and use it as well as there's a big community behind Ballerina. You can get help from the community as well. Then the uh, uh, the other section that I explained, it's called the identity and access management. Uh, that's where our identity server product uh, can help you. So you can build various uh, identity and access management scenarios there. Uh, you can just um, uh, implement authorization, authentication, um, con consent management, or you can use it to secure your APIs. You can use in token based uh, security mechanisms. And then if you need to build multi factor authentication, all these type of fundamental uh, identity related capabilities sign built in identity server so can so you can just uh, configure it and uh, directly use it with your application and all our products provide a, a product API or a, a system level API as well so it's really easy for you to um, embed our products into um, another software solution uh, like if you are planning to build a product you can use that system API and embedded into your solution as well. So these are uh, kind of a very high level um, details about uh, how and what we provide uh, for your uh, application development uh, experience. So uh, feel free to uh, download the product and then uh, uh, use it when you are building these applications. And if you are looking for a cloud native middleware stack to build your applications, this is the place that you can come and download all the core capabilities uh, when it comes to application development. Thank you. Yeah.